Now that we know about how to compute Taylor series through substitution, we can get busy. Let's turn our attention to the hyperbolic trig functions. Do you remember those guys back from chapter one? The hyperbolic sine and the hyperbolic cosine function are what we're going to focus on. Remember that these are defined in terms of exponentials. The hyperbolic cosine, or cosh of x, is 1 half quantity e to the x plus e to the minus x. The hyperbolic sine, or cinch, is given by 1 half e to the x minus e to the minus x. Now, it's kind of a mystery at first. Why are these called hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine? These don't look anything like those trig functions. Well, now that we've got the definitions, let's think in terms of Taylor series. How hard is this going to be? Oh, this is not going to be so hard. These exponentials are so nice to work with. We can just directly substitute into the exponential series and do a little bit of algebra. So, to proceed, let's take those definitions for cosh and cinch and rewrite them a little bit. I'm going to stack the e to the x above and the e to the minus x below, and then I'm going to replace them with the exponential series. e to the x, we know that's 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, etc., etc. What's e to the minus x? When we substitute minus x into those all of the odd degree terms pick up a minus sign. And now we need to add all these guys together. What happens when we do so? Well, arranging the terms by degree and lining things up, we notice some patterns. With hyperbolic cosine, all of the odd degree terms cancel out because we've got that plus and the minus. And all of the even degree terms get doubled. So in the end, we're left with 2 times quantity 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial, x to the 4th over 4 factorial, keep going. And what we notice is that we are left with all of the even degree terms of the exponential series. What happens with hyperbolic sine? Well, because of that minus sign that was out in front, now all of the even degree terms cancel out. And we are left with twice every odd degree term, x, x cubed over 3 factorial, x to the fifth over 5 factorial, we keep all of the odd powers. Now, because of that 1 half that was out in front, that cancels with the 2, we kind of see why that was in there now. And in the end, after some algebraic simplification, we see that the hyperbolic cosine consists of all the even terms of the exponential function. The hyperbolic sine consists of all the odd terms of the exponential function. This is very satisfying. This is one of the reasons why these functions are given these names. Now, we can convert these series to summation notation very easily using the same sorts of conventions we used for cosine and sine. The hyperbolic cosine is the sum. k goes from 0 to infinity x to the 2k divided by quantity 2k factorial. Hyperbolic sine is the sum. k goes from 0 to infinity x to the 2k plus 1 divided by quantity 2k plus 1 factorial. This is very nice. There are no more annoying minus 1 to the k things going on that we have to worry about. Hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, ah, these are your friends. You are going to want to remember these series, these formulae. We're going to see these again.